Assalamu alaikum students welcome to another lecture of slate this is khwaja yasin and let's study chemistry in the last video we talked about how important moles is for both o and a level students and in these videos we will be first covering all the topic of moles so that it can be easier for my students for all the students i would say to study moles so in this lecture we are going to talk about the hydrated salts it's a very short topic it's a very small topic but the the questions and the calculations are very common in the exam so when we talk about hydrated salts what are hydrated salts in the exam they can either use the term hydrated salts or you they can simply call it crystals you must have seen crystals in your real life they have they have a translucent effect the light can pass through the crystals now why does that happen because as the name goes hydrated salts when we talk about the salts part this is an ionic compound but as the term hydrated goes with it means we have water inside the salt i repeat water inside the salt you know about the ionic lattice in an ionic compound there in the lattice there are spaces and we have water in those spaces again this this information is not that relevant because for hydrated salts we only get questions questions to calculate questions to solve various things about the hydrated salts so let's at first dissect what a hydrated salt is about for example we know about copper sulfate cuso4 this is just the ionic compound but if copper sulfate has water in it 5 moles of water that's copper sulfate pentahydrate and this is the ionic compound likewise are the hydrated salt we know about nacl 2h2o this is sodium chloride bihydrate we will talk about the names and nomenclature but let's quickly understand what do we have in the case of hydrated salts it's a very simple process if you burn if you combust if you heat a hydrated salt or a crystal the water leaves system so let's talk about copper sulfate here cuso4 5h2o we get copper sulfate and five water molecules this is what we call a hydrated salt or a hydrated crystal but when i heat it i get a crystal a salt without water in it and we call it an hydrous salt an hydrous salt is the salt without the water we a specific water i'll tell you what do we call it so this is just water so an hydrous salt plus water will also form hydrated salt but the water outside the hydrated salt is water but when water is inside the hydrated salt we call it water of crystallization and students i would like to remove this arrow because this is also a reversible reaction where if you heat the hydrated salt you get the anhydrous salt and you water and if you dissolve the anhydrous salt in water you get hydrated salt again so this is the the whole process of crystallization and water of crystallization now any salt can have various amounts of water for instance a copper sulfate it can be copper sulfate hydrate monohydrate so this is monohydrate if we have two hydrogens after a dot dihydrate trihydrate four will be tetrahydrate the reason we are working on these names because they can ask you about the name of the salt which you are going to calculate in the exam then 5 6 7 8 9 
सेवन एट नाइन द रेस्ट वन आर इजी पेंटाहाइड्रेट सो द कॉपर सल्फेट वॉज पेंटाहाइड्रेट हेक्सा हेप्टा ऑक्टा नोना हाइड्रेट सो दैट इज वॉट यू नो अबाउट हाइड्रेट कॉलिंग दम हाइड्रेट बट हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट देयर एटोमिक मैसेज द मोलिकुलर मैसेज so we know that sodium is 23 chlorine is 50 uh, sorry 35.5 water is 18 so we know that one water is 18 so this dot this is the only dot in chemistry or sciences where you going, where, where you're going to not multiply you're not going to multiply that but you're going to add it so you add the values when we talk about hydrated hydrated salts so we know 58.5 plus 36 and the answer would become six that would be around 94.5 so that is when we calculate the mass so there are various calculations associated with hydrated salts the questions of hydrated salts will have the concept of both empirical and molecular formula i will tell you how that's not relatable but the calculation and procedure is the same and secondly the percentage composition we did in the last video so let's talk about this question from the past papers a 5 gram sample of hydrated barium chloride and as you can see nh2o bacl2 nh2o the number is missing here is heated to drive off water After heating 4.26 gram of anhydrous barium chloride, which is BaCl2 remains, what is the value of N in hydrates formula? So, it's simple. A hydrated salt will have a mass which is equal to the mass of anhydrous salt and water. So we are going to use that very calculation, that very division, and let's see what we have. The sample of hydrated barium chloride which is the crystal is 5 gram mass of crystal so now mass of anhydrous barium chloride is mass of just bacl2 that is 4.26 grams but now we don't have the mass of water here how will we calculate the mass of water it's very simple mass of water will be equal to hydrated salt minus an hydrous salt so 5 minus 4.26 and that becomes 0.74 grams so now this is the mass of water that we have as i said we need to deal it in the way of empirical formula empirical formula was the ratio of atoms so now in hydrated compounds we have the ratio of compounds look at this these formulas we have one ratio 5 one compound of one mole of copper sulfate five moles of water One ratio two here, one mole of NaCl, two moles of water. So we are going to use the same concept here. BaCl two ratio water. We need to calculate the moles of water here. So students, in the compound we know that we have point seven four grams of water. So let's see 0.74 grams of water. We will just calculate n equals to mass over mr. So let's calculate the mass of water here. Zero point seven four divided by the mr of water, which is eighteen. So point seven four divided by eighteen, and the answer becomes. 0.041 this is the mass 
uh, the, these are the moles of water here. So now we need to also calculate the moles of barium chloride. So for that, we need to calculate, we need to do it the same way, which is mass divided by MR. Mass, we know it's 4.26. And we're going to divide that by the MR of barium chloride. So let's see the periodic table. And in the periodic table, we see that barium has an atomic mass of 137. And CL, we know 35.5 into 2. That makes it 71. So 137 plus 71, that would be 138. My apologies, 208. So this is the value that we have. So we're going to divide the value. Mass 4.26 divided by 208. And this gives us a value 0 0.021. So we have a value here. So just like the empirical formula calculation, we have two different moles and we need to have a ratio of whole number. So what are we going to do? We take the smallest value, which is 0 0.021. And we divide both the values by it. So the answer comes 1 ratio 2 here. So we know that we have 2 moles of water here. So that is why n equals to 2. Hence barium chloride dihydrate. So that is what the answer is. Now let's do another question in the form of percentages. Determine the formula and the name of the hydrate for ammonium phosphate where you have the percentages and in the empirical formula, we dealt with percentages as well. So let's quickly do, uh, solve it that way as well. So ammonium phosphate, which is NH4, 3PO4, ratio H2O. So again, we have percentages and when we have percentages in the, in the previous video, we talked about regarding empirical and molecular formula, that when we have percentages, we assume that they are masses in 100 grams. So we have 73.42% of ammonium phosphate and we need to divide by the MR of the compound and we have 26.58% or grams of water divided by 18. So let's calculate the value. But for that, we need to calculate the atomic mass of uh, ammonium phosphate. Let's quickly calculate. So nitrogen is 14 plus 4 and into 3 plus the mass of phosphorus, which is 30, plus 16 into 4, which is 64, plus 30, plus 3 into 28, And that makes it 75 and 75 is 81. So the final mass of ammonium phosphate is, let's calculate the value. That is somewhere 31, I guess. Hmm. The final mass is 149. So let's calculate the value. We just divide the value by so 73.42 divided by 149. So the answer is 0 0.49 moles. And when we talk about water, we have one point 476 moles. Again, we take the shortest value, smallest value, which is 0.49. So we divide both the sides with 0.49. We get one here 
and this divided by point we get three here so the answer is nh4 3 po4 CH2O. So the answer is ammonium phosphate trihydrate. So students, this is what we have. But let's do this question in another way. For instance, they ask you to calculate the percentage of water found in ammonium phosphate pentahydrate, uh, trihydrate. So how will you calculate that? Let's say, okay, let's do the other way. Calculate percentage of water in let's call it tetrahydrate this time so what will you do it's going to be the same formula as that of percentage composition so percentage mass so percentage of water now simply as we know here we are going to multiply it by MR of water into the moles of water that we have and we are going to divide by the MR of the compound and we then finally multiply it by 100. So we know that the MR of water is 18. We multiply it by 4 since we have 4 molecules of water and then we have to calculate the final MR of the compound which is 221. This is 72 divided by 221. 100. And that becomes 32.6%. So students, using the very same formula of percentage composition, you can also find the percentage of water in a hydrated salt. This is the same formula, just tweak a little bit. And that is how you can calculate the percentage of water. That is how you can calculate the number of moles of water present in a hydrated salt. And again, this is also one of the ways. So this is a very important topic being covered for all of you. The, the, the questions are there in both ONA level exams. So thank you so much for being here with me again. We will meet again in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz.